Hey, I'm Mark Romanak, and you're watching Fishing 411. Stick around because we're up in beautiful northern Michigan targeting some silverfish. Stick around. Well, we're on Mullet Lake up here in northern Michigan, and we're targeting these landlocked rainbows. Mullet and an adjacent lake over here, Burt Lake, both have these rainbow trout. The good news is, is that they don't get a lot of pressure, and this is a pretty unique fishery up here. The bad news is, you never know where these fish are gonna be in the water column. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread out our gear. We're gonna use planer boards and lead core line to get out to the side and down, and we're also gonna use downriggers to get even deeper yet. So we're literally gonna saturate the water column from about 30 feet down all the way down to 60, 70 feet down, and we'll let the steelhead tell us where they live. On this particular episode, I had Dale Boyce with me as a guest. Now, Dale and I have fished here before at Mullet Lake, so we kind of knew what we were getting into. I enjoy fishing with Dale. He's a very good guy to have in the boat. Uh, we've known each other for a very, very long time. One of my closest, oldest, and dearest friends. We hardly even got our lines all set up when we got our first bite, and it came on lead core and a planer board, and it came on a spoon color that is uh, kind of near and dear to my heart. It's called Jerry Lee. And uh, if you haven't seen that color, that's the color right there. And uh, Jerry Lee is a charter captain, uh, infamous charter captain from the Great Lakes. He's passed on now. Uh, but he can still be with us. He can still come out here and catch these rainbows with us because we're still using this color that was named after him. But in general, what you're looking at is orange and coppers. And I got a fish on the outside board that Jerry Lee just struck. Here we go. Pulled that board right under water. Boy, did he ever. He's gone. There it is. There, it's, it is. there it is. The old board's back up. <laughs> Dale, why don't you take this fish? All right. Why don't you do that? I got my hands full. I'll see if I can get that rigger up there and stuff, and we'll get the other Jerry Lee in the water. How's that sound? This may uh, may take a while, because he is, uh, he's pulling. Of course, that planer board's still on there, too, so uh, it'll take us a while to get that in. Or we'll get that off the line, and then we'll see if we can't get this fish in the boat. This is uh, about the second or third time I've been out here with Mark, and uh, this is quite a unique fishery. We're getting some really nice steelhead. This, this year especially, they say, uh, they're running a little bigger. Um, six, eight, occasional 10 pounder. Very nice fish for, uh, for Inland Lake steelhead fishery like this. And uh, this is an excellent walleye fishery too, and pike. So, very unique. Uh, we're getting a little action here from this guy. He's uh, not liking coming into the boat. Well, we got that rigger reset, and that's got the Jerry Lee spoon on it, too. So, time for landing it? Not quite yet, but we're getting close. <laughs> I have not seen color on him yet. There's a little bit of color in the wall. Oh, that's a good fish, Dale. That's a good fish. Just what we're looking for. Stay down there. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. A little closer. Look at that. All right. There's hey. our first rainbow of the morning, that man. That is a nice one. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about. Let's get him out of there. Dale, you did good. You did good. Look at that. Beautiful fish. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Lee, buddy, you did it for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know he's still catching his fish. I tell you what, I am so proud of that. That is really, really cool. Are they not gorgeous? Where are you going to go and catch rainbow trout like this in an inland lake? I mean, just that is amazing. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Northern Michigan's got it going on. Look at him unhooked. You want a couple of these for the smoker, right? Definitely. All right, let's keep a couple today and put it on the smoker. In fact, we're gonna put a couple on the grill and eat them. Oh, Jerry Lee's tape's coming off, man. That's a bummer. Uh -oh. <laughs> we don't want that to come off. That is working beautiful. Additional considerations provided by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. 
Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV, Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. Well, you can see here, this is my spoon box. It's one of them. I've actually got three of them on board. And these are called mini streaks. It's a medium sized spoon. And usually that's the best size for these rainbow trout. Now, we're going to experiment with some larger spoons today, too, because the color that seems to be the one they want is we've had two bites so far, and it's called Jerry Lee is the color. I only have one of those in a mini. So I do have some other ones in larger spoons. So we're, right now we're going to figure out if it's a color thing or if it's a size thing. But my gut is telling me it's probably more along the size of the spoon that's getting the job done right now. So we're going to stick with most of our spoons, uh, these mini streaks, just like this. I was just commenting that we had gone a while without a hookup. And, uh, and when you, really when you're doing this kind of open water trolling, what you're hoping to do is you're hoping to get both sides of the boat to light up. Well, that's not going to happen. That fish just pull off. It feels a little light. Oh, no, he's still there. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just saw that board pull again. So um, the problem with steelhead is that they're very athletic. He can run towards you really quick. So but what we're trying to do is get both sides of the boat to light up. And we finally did get a strike on the other side. So uh, we're looking at our third hookup here. Um, steelhead, getting them in the boat. Not always a given. <laughs> you just got to work at it. Let's see what happens here. You can keep him going just like that. That'd be perfect, Dale. Let's see what we can do. Staying down nice. That's actually a good fish. About as good as the first one. Look at that. All right. In fact, it might even be better. Better than the first one. It might oh. even be better than the first one. All right, we definitely got an orange thing going on. You can see the orange on this spoon. The flip side, of course, is the copper, um, which always seems to be effective on these fish. But uh, Dale, you're doing all right, man. <laughs> you're two for two. Keep, keep it going. Keep them reeling them in, Boy, buddy. What a beautiful fish. Oh, that my, they are fantastic. gorgeous. What a fishery. Well, there's your uh, almost a smoker load right there. There you go, yeah. Now we just need one for the grill. Mullet Lake is really one of the freshwater gems up here in northern Michigan. It's got both warm water and cold water species here. Obviously, we demonstrated you catch lots of rainbow trout here, but it's also got walleye, northern pike, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, perch, and other warm water species as well. So a person that would come up here is going to find a multitude of things to keep them interested from a fishing perspective. All right. All right. A little action again here. Oh, I like I it. I love it. I, I love like it. it. What I like more is that we own the lake. I think we're the only <laughs> boat out here today. You saw that one bass boat go by a while ago, and that's it. I don't know where I he went. A lot of beautiful water here. It amazes me. September is one of my favorite times to fish because it's cool. It's not. Uh, it's not uncomfortably cold, and uh, and you get the whole fishery to yourself, man. He's either just dogging it, or he's not very big. Well, he's trying to decide that he wants to stay away from the boat. There we go. Now yeah. we got some activity. Now we got some life again, huh? Now, Dale, just keep him All coming right, the way he is. Coming. I think we're in good shape. Oh, yeah. About the same. Whoa, now he's crazy. Wow. Woo. He got wild there at the last, didn't he? I've spent a lot of time chasing steelhead on the rivers in Michigan, sometimes with success and a lot of times without. But I'll tell you what, this is still one of my favorite fish to catch, and it's just one of the prettiest fishes there are. I just absolutely love catching these, and to think that we can run out here in an inland lake in northern Michigan on a day like today and land steelhead after steelhead. I just love it. Well, that's the spoon that Dale just caught that steelhead on, and uh, as you can see, again, it's that orange color seems to be working. What we're going to do is we're going to juice these lures up a little bit. This one got quite a bit of blood on it from that fish, and, uh, and I think what I want to do here is try to camouflage any unnatural odors on here by putting a little bit of scent on there. All I'm going to do is just squeeze a little bit on there and then I'm just going to rub it on like that, both sides here just a little bit, and, uh, and make that spoon just smell a little bit more like food. And I got a feeling that's going to help us. So scent products, they may not be the, the only answer, but they're a little piece of the puzzle to keep in mind. A year ago we went to Alaska and fished in Alaska for a week. Everybody there was using scent. Um, and scent products. So just recently we had a chance to go back to the West Coast again. This time we fished the Columbia River at Astoria. Everybody there also fishes scents and they really believe in it. There's two theories of thought. One is that the scent is attracting fish, all right? It smells like fish, so it's attracting game fish. The other is, is that it just camouflages or masks human odor on your lures. 
Either one, I'm not sure which is going on here, but I can tell you from the limited experience I've had when using Sense, it does seem to help you catch a few more fish, and it definitely helps my confidence, there's no doubt about that. So Scent products, they may not be the, the only answer, but they're a, a little piece of the puzzle to keep in mind. Additional considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle and by Fishhawk Electronics. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. Let's take a second and talk a little bit about one of our new sponsors. It's a product called Smooth Move Seats. Now, if you're not familiar with them, what they are is they're a hydraulic style suspension seat. What it does is it uses a combination of technologies to give you a spring-loaded ride on your seat. Now, today, while we're fishing, it's not very rough water, so it's not really much of an issue. But when we fish big water that's rough, these seats are enormously important to us because what it does is it takes the torture out of running in rough water. Because the suspension is adjustable, you can adjust it down to a person as light as 100 pounds all the way up to a person as heavy as 300 pounds. So you can customize the seat tension to be just perfect for your body weight so you get the best possible ride. They really do make boating in rough water a smooth operation. Dale's got the hot side here. Uh, oh, he took off, didn't he? Woo, good hookup. And they definitely let you know when the uh, when you got a fish in. Boy, that board just took off. I love it. I love it. <laughs> They're just scattered. You know, there's no rhyme or reason, Dale, as far as where these fish are. I mean, this is a big open base in the water, and our waypoints are scattered all over the point. So it's not like it's a pot of fish. They're just they're everywhere out here in this deep water is what it really comes down. Oh, you're down making to. that turn also. So. Tell you what, we'll take it. You can keep them buckled up. The problem with these rainbows is they're hard to keep buckled up. One of the things to keep in mind about lead core fish is that you've got a lot of line in the water and there's a lot of resistance on that fish. So the best way to fight them is exactly the way Dale's doing it, slow and steady. You don't need to pump the rod, just keep that handle cranking. Because if that fish runs towards you, he's going to get slack in line, he's going to get off. So just keep cranking and cranking and cranking. The only time you stop reeling is if that fish makes a run. But every other time, Keep that handle turning slow and steady. Dale's doing perfect. Oh, yeah. Throw him to the left side if you can here. That's going to be perfect. Oh, yeah, right. hey, another one. He don't get any better than that, man. That's a nice one. You are, oh, look at that. Oh, he just popped that. off. Popped right that's off. The, that's the way we want to do it. Because it uh, looks like we got a couple for the grill here, so we're in good shape. There. If he'll hold still long enough for me to get the hook yeah, out, hook, well, hook at me. There, I got it. All right. All right. That's so this fish has fish. never been touched by human hands, so what we can do, we can just show him off in the net there. You can see him in the net. The simplest way with these rubber nets is just to put the fish right back in the water, don't even touch him, and just let him go right out of the net right here. That way he's going to be able to survive. There he goes. To juice or not to juice, that's the question. You know, that last deal that Dale just reeled in was actually one of the only lures that we put scent on, and he got bit. Now, does it mean that it got bit because of the juice, because of the scent? Hard to say, but we do know one thing for sure, it's not hurting. So. Definitely give Scent products a try. It works, there's no doubt in my mind. To what degree it works, you're gonna to have to figure that one out for yourself. We're fishing two different types of planer boards here. This is the classic OR12. It's been around forever from offshore tackle. And this is the one that most people are familiar with and they use. This works really good on lead lanes on say leg core out to about 300 feet. Now, the, the board in my other hand here, the left one here, this is called the SST Pro Mag, and as you can see, it's clearly bigger. The reason it's bigger is because it's designed for pulling more gear. Things like copper line, which are heavier and have more resistance in the water. So if you're gonna fish copper, or you're gonna fish diving planers, or other things with a lot of resistance, you're probably gonna want the SST Pro Mag. If you're fishing normal lengths of, of line, uh, or smaller lengths of lead core, I think that the OR12 here is more than adequate to get the job done. Finally, a copper fires. All right. <laughs> Way to go, Dale. All right. You got the hot hand today, man. Just sitting in the right seat. <laughs> I don't care what seat, as long as they bite. I don't care what seat it is. So we've been struggling today. You know, we haven't caught a ton of fish. I think this one is our fifth hookup. Um, something along that line. And uh, we've had a couple others that came off. But the bottom line is what we're dealing with is that most of the fish are being caught on the planer boards on the leg core. We know how deep that's fishing. Our other lines, our, you know, our downriggers and our copper line have not lit up yet. So this is the first fish we've caught on a different line. Well, maybe we figured it out. Oh, I just saw him jump back there. What could be finer? A day like today, on a beautiful lake, and I guess I have to give credit to a heck of a good fisherman that I'm fishing with. 
but land an inland lake steelhead. I just absolutely love this. It has been a great day of fishing, there's no doubt about it. You really can't measure this in, in how many fish you're catching. I mean, the bottom line is, is that this is a unique fishery. Where else are you going to go and get, you know, six, seven, eight rainbow trout to hook up in a morning of fishing? That's pretty incredible. Um, that is pretty incredible. Well, I can see him now. I can see him now. Dale, why don't you go to the left side of the boat, see if you can pull him over top of that rigger. Perfect. Perfect. A little closer. Oh, come on, baby. There he is. Oh, nice big hey, male. Looks nice like a nice fish. big male. That is a nice fish. Oh, that's a yeah. gorgeous fish. <laughs> wow. Look how thick he is. Is that ever a beautiful fish? Inland Lake Steelhead in northern Michigan that are very hard to hang on to. <laughs> Powerful little fish. We finally got a fish to go on something other than lead core. And uh, this one went on copper. This was Mark's suggestion. We had this copper uh, out a little further. We brought them in and took them off the planer boards and just kind of run them flat line. And it, uh, it seemed to make the difference because we hooked up. Additional considerations provided by Motor Guide Electric Motors, engineered for anglers, and also by Procure Bait Sense, ruthlessly effective. Additional considerations provided by Eagle Marine Service and by Ontario's Algoma Country. That real. Outside of the rest of the year, these rainbows are here, but they can be anywhere in the lake. Oh, uh, okay. And in the thermal climb period, when the water sets up and we get these temperatures that they like, at least we know we're going to find them. We're going to find them in that cooler water. And that's what concentrates them. Because there's a lot of water here. This lake's 11 miles long. These fish can be a lot of places. So at least in July, or rather I should say late July, but at least in August and September, we know they're going to be in this deeper water. And we just have to figure out at what depth they are. He just pulled off. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is my way my day has gone. No. Uh, thank you, Michigan DNR. <laughs> <laughs> We're reaping the rewards here of stocked fisheries. Wow. This fish is just pounding, and he just pulled off. Literally just pulled off. It, it, is, it is what it is. He just shook off. I hope this isn't a mistake. He's I'm, migrating I'm, towards I'm, the net, yes. Migrating here and... Well, I can see the leader, so this one's getting pretty close. I think we got to the leader the last time, Mark, yeah. so let's... Uh... I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but this is 27-pound test lead core, and then we've got a 20-pound a test leader behind it. So that's a pretty standard rig here, and our backing is 20-pound test monofilament. So that's a pretty standard setup for, for lead core fishing all through the Great Lakes. Essentially, this is exactly the same lead core rig I would use for trout or salmon steelhead out on Lake Michigan or Lake Huron. We're just applying it. Whoa, 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 don't pull so hard. Oh, oh he did it. He did, he just pulled off. He just pulled off right there. He got right to that flat one last point and he just jerked down it. So. Oh, baby. It's not meant to be, Dale. That's not meant to be. I guess we might as well go home. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we'll get a fourth one in this pass. I'm not giving up. <laughs> You know, we caught a lot of steelhead today. We also lost a lot of steelhead, and that's par for the course when you're fishing open water rainbow trout. The reason for it is these fish are very strong, and once they get hooked up, they fight and they fight and they fight some more, and so it's very easy for them to tear the hook free and actually escape. So it's not uncommon to hear people saying, I went four for eight or six for 10. That's par for the course when you're talking about rainbow trout. I think we did very well for the time on the water we spent. Well, as long as I don't touch the rod, you got a fair chance. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make any <laughs> predictions here. I'm not going anywhere not, near not anymore. Not the way rod. it's been going. But this has been a good pass. This has been a couple fish pass here. So yeah. We've only been averaging about one fish a pass, uh, which isn't red hot action, but it's definitely good enough to keep you interested. Definitely good enough to keep you interested. Get him closer to the no, boat. No, he does I can't get off <laughs> quite as easy. That was the problem with my last one, and he was fighting so hard right from the get-go. I just. I just think they tear the hooks right out, yeah, literally. Yeah, with this lead core. Not a lot of stretch. Well, he's not as small as all that. He's not as big as some of the ones we caught. He's definitely smaller. There you go, sir. Good deal. Got know. that walleye feel. Got that. <laughs> Sock in the water feel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it's got. It just, it just feels... A little heavy. Well, copper's not a lot of fun, is it? No. 
There's a lot of line there, isn't there? <laughs> my forearms are starting to burn. I didn't want to say. I didn't want to say anything. I was afraid I was going to get ridiculed. My arms were burning too. Well, it is effective. You got fish on there? We got our fish on here. And what did I call it? What did I say this was going to be? I think you said this was a walleye. I said it's got a, it's kind of fighting like a walleye. I'm gonna have to back up because I can't get the leader through the eyelet here. Let's see what we got here. Ah! Oh, sorry about that, Dale. Yeah, I got him. He zigged when I zagged. So. That's, that's a, a nice walleye. That's a very nice walleye. And that'll add a, a little bit to our, uh, to our enjoyment here <laughs> of the day. It's this only fitting that you're able to land the walleye. <laughs> the walleye guy lands a walleye. Yeah. You know, and that's a pretty decent fish. It's a very good fish. You know, for these inland lakes, you're not going to be dealing with large walleyes. Um, but that's a nice adult walleye, probably close to that 20 inch range right there. And as you can see, he ate that old mini streak right down to his tonsils. So, <laughs> not, bad. not bad. I lost track of how many rainbows, but I remember this one because it's the last one. <laughs> Good Thanks job, a lot, Dale. Mark. Had great a great day. day. Great day. Woohoo, <laughs> baby. Hey, my name is Mark Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 401. I'd like to thank Dale Voice for joining me on a day at Rainbow Trout Fishing. Don't get no better than this, Dale. It doesn't get any better than this. Hey, we'll see you here, same time, same place next week. Now, that is a pretty fish. Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leaders in trolling technology, Yakima Bait. Home of the rooster tail. Maxima fishing lines, the best line every time. Evinroot Outboards, introducing the E-Tech G2. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Smooth moves, smooth your ride. Got a wow! Got sh <laughs> I think the coolers out of the, the deal. <laughs> I don't want to end up in the drink here. Um.